I'm going to start in a simple seat. If you'd like, you can sit up on a bolster, on a blanket, on a block, on your couch cushion, whatever it is. And be comfortable in your seat. So feeling the sit bones connect to something. Feeling your palms face down on your knees. So when your knees are, your palms are down, your intention is grounding. You're bringing your body back to this space of with your palms down, perhaps your eyes closed, if that feels safe, you're going to take a deep breath in through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. And inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Take this one more time. Exhale. You're going to draw your left palm in first, covered by your right. Feeling both hands over your heart. And actually start to feel the rhythm of your heartbeat. So not just having your hands over your heart with this wish-washing intention, but really mindfully feeling your heartbeat. Feeling the blood and the breath as it swirls through your body. Having this conscious awareness of what your intention is. Maybe it's joy and ease. Grounding and health. Awareness and love. Or maybe it's a word of intention and some kalpa of your own choosing. Wherever you are, holding on to that in your breath, underneath your palm. When you're ready, bring the palms down to meet your thighs, to meet your knees, maybe blinking your eyes open. If you're on the block or the bolster, you might want to shift a little bit forward so that you're on the earth. And then start to find rotation here through the hips. Switch direction. And then draw back in towards neutral and towards center. Keep those palms on your knees as you shift the heart forward, roll the shoulder blades open or back up. Exhale, fold and round on me, the leg towards me. Inhale, the head and the heart rise to the sky. Exhale again, fold and round. One more, inhale to rise. Exhale, release. Come back in towards neutral. Both palms reach up towards the sky. And as you exhale, you're going to drop your right palm down. The left palm comes up and across to your palm. Your gaze is wherever it's most comfortable. So perhaps it's down towards the earth or maybe up towards the sky. Inhale high and exhale all the way over towards the left. Both arms rise up towards the sky. And as you exhale, reach the fingertips out in front of you. Drop the head heavy between the shoulders, unhinging through your jaw. Begin to release the tongue from the roof of your mouth. Walk your fingertips back towards your knees, back towards your hips, and across the ankles in the opposite direction. Both arms reach up towards the sky. And as you exhale, you're going to twist over towards the left, drawing your right palm to your knee, your left palm behind you. Start to roll the shoulders open, lengthening here through the collarbone, rinsing through the belly, through the spine.
Inhale, both arms reach up towards the sky. And as you exhale, you're gonna to twist over to the opposite side, drawing left palm across the right knee or the thumb. Rinsing here again, through the belly, through the spine. Strengthening into your willpower. Releasing toxicity, letting go of anything that's no longer serving you. And then both palms rise, lengthen up towards the sky. Exhale as you bow to the earth, reach the fingertips forward. Again, draw that head heavy between your shoulders. Now, if this doesn't feel good here and your fingertips are way back here, that's okay too. You're feeling this in the psoas. So right towards the back of the hips. Now, if you're in your own home, it could actually feel good to have maybe some pillows propped up underneath you instead of blocks, because we don't often have the exact same props at home as you would in the studio. Just whatever is making you most comfortable, perhaps a throw blanket or a couple of pillows, anything that you have to support your body. You're gonna take another full round of breath. This time your gaze is going to start to look forward. Not a delightful way. Your gaze is going to start to look forward. You're going to roll here into your tabletop position. Now that doesn't feel comfortable. You're just going to get into tabletop however it feels good. Spread your fingertips nice and wide with a big palm. Shoulders are on top of your wrists. Hips are over your knees. And then start to find a little bit of movement. So in my classes, we call this sahajasana. It's a term that is often used in Shiva Ray's classes and Prana classes. And it literally means the intention of just mindful movement. So whatever it is that you're doing is perfect. Maybe close your eyes. As long as you're intentionally connecting breath to movement, you're in the right spot. You're going to come back towards neutral whenever you're ready. Again, shoulders are over your wrists, hips are over your knees. Draw the belly towards the earth, the head and the heart rise. Inhale. Exhale as you fold and round, draw the navel into your spine. Inhale, the head and the heart rise, lengthen the heart. Exhale, fold and round, draw the navel to meet your spine. One more here, inhale to rise, and exhale to fold. Come back towards neutral, knitting the be belly, the navel, in towards the spine. You're going to extend your left foot nice and long, mind you. So the toes are flexed, they're not pointing their thumb. You're going to engage, zipper up a little bit through the core so don't hang out in the belly. Lengthen the spine high here. Push through the left palm and reach the right arm all the way out in front of you. This might be plenty. This might feel excellent. If you have a little bit further to go, you're going to take your elbow and draw it in towards your knee to tap. Inhale, extend it nice and long. Exhale to tap. Last one, inhale. Exhale to tap. Inhale to lengthen. You're going to release the right palm to meet the earth and step your left foot in between your thumb. You're going to walk it a little bit further forward because I want you to lean on the back of your knee. So instead of being directly hip over knee, you're going to lean slightly forward so that the meaty part of your knee is a little bit more supported. You can always use a blanket, a throw blanket or pillow underneath your knee. You're going to root through your right or through your left foot rather. Palms come to your knee, and then shift the fingertips up towards the sky. We're going to find a little bit of what we like to call rhythmic vinyasa, so a little bit of flow, a little bit of shifting movement. Take an inhale to rise, exhale to fold. Now you can have blocks here on either side for the pillows or any props that you like. Inhale to rise, exhale to fold. Lengthen here, finding breath. Last one, inhale. As you exhale, you're going to bring the palms down to meet to the earth. You're going to start to walk 
the left toes a little bit over to the left. So I'm just angling my body so you can see. Draw the left toes a little bit over to the left and just hang out here. Maybe rock a little bit side to side in the hips. Finding breath. back towards neutral. Plant those palms, slide your knee in to meet your shoulder and step it back, tabletop. Find again a little Sahajasana, a little bit of creative movement here. Shifting around through the body, connecting the breath and the movement. Maybe you're starting to work up a little bit of heat in the body or a lot. You're gonna come back towards neutral again, this time extending the right toes, flexing the foot behind you. Again, instead of hanging out, zipper up through the core. And then extend your left finger to nice and long all the way out in front of you. Option to stay here or to go further, deep breath in. Exhale, tap, knee to nips. Inhale, extend. Exhale, knee to elbow. Last one. Exhale, inhale, extend. Planting your palm to meet the earth. Step your right foot in between your thumbs. So it might be a step and then shifting it forward. You're gonna again, roll on to the tippity top of the back knee and then the palms rise towards the front knee and then towards the side, that feels good. Inhale to lengthen, exhale as you fold. Finding again that rhythmic vinyasa. Last one. As you exhale, you're gonna plant those palms. Start to walk the right toes over to the right. And again, maybe a little sway side to side. Seeing it from a different angle on this side here. And come back towards neutral. You're gonna to start to slide your right knee in towards your shoulder and step it back, tabletop position. Again, spread through those fingertips, find that last space here of your Sahajasana. And then zipper your core up, spread through your fingertips. You're gonna push in tension here through the index finger and the thumb. Spread through your fingers and tuck all 10 toes. As you inhale, you're going to extend your left foot nice and long. Engage the belly, extend your right foot nice and long, so you're in your high plank. Lift the hips up towards the sky, downward facing dog. So the head is heavy here between your shoulders. Maybe you're bending one knee and then the other, swing those hips a little bit side to side. We're gonna do a few sun salutation A's here. So a little bit of movement here, a little bit of awakening. The gaze looks forward. You're gonna bend those knees and take as many steps as you need to meet the top of the mat. Root through your feet, sweep up towards the sky, inhale, lift. Exhale, hands to your heart center. Inhale, sweep it high. Exhale as you bend your knees and bow to the earth. Halfway rise, inhale. As you exhale, you're gonna plant those palms, step back, high plank. Engaging in your belly, engaging in your core. This time, at first, just drop your knees, untuck your toes. Elbows hug into your ribs as you lower down to knee the mark. Push through the palms, inhale, rise, cobra pose. Keeping the thighs connected to the neck. Tuck all 10 toes, lift the hips up towards the sky, downward facing dog, Adam Krishna. You're gonna take another full round of breath here. This time going a little bit faster. I think we're gonna do three rounds of sunnings. Gaze looks forward, this time you step or maybe you even float to meet your fingertips. Root to rise, reach up towards the sky. And exhale, hands to heart center. Come and sit the heat, equal standard. Palms rise high, inhale to lengthen. Bend your knees and bow, fold to the earth. Halfway rise, palms to shins. Plant those palms, step back, high plank. This time, option to drop the knees or to keep them lifted. 
Tilt slightly forward, lower down to the earth. Untuck your toes, slide forward, cobra pose. Exhale, downward facing dog, head heavy between the shoulders. This time a full intentional sun salutation A. Take it however you would like. Gaze looks forward, step or float to meet your fingers. Root to rise, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, some spit through you. Root to rise, reach high. Exhale, Uttanasana, fold. Halfway rise, palms to shins. Plant those palms, step or float back, high to low plank, Chaturanga Nasana. Look forward, this time thighs off the earth, if you would like. Upward dog. Urdhva Mukha and exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. You're going to bring your right toes to the sky, inhale. Gaze looks forward, draw knee to meet your nose, just that same motion that we did in tabletop. Inhale up towards the sky. Exhale, knee to meet your nose, again, same motion that we did in tabletop. Inhale to rise. Plant your foot in between your thumbs, reach up, crescent lunge. Hook your thumbs up towards the sky here. And as you exhale, you're gonna draw over towards the right. Sink a little bit lower into your front knee. You want your knee directly over your front ankle. Inhale up towards the sky. Exhale, hands to meet your hips. You're gonna take your back leg, your left leg, step it up halfway and straighten through your front leg here. Take a deep breath in, and as you exhale, tilt forward. Maybe you close your eyes, maybe that's a lot on your balance. You're not reaching for the floor. Lift that heart up towards the sky, inhale. Take your back leg, step towards the top of your mat. Root to rise, reach up towards the sky, and exhale, hands to heart center. You're gonna interlock the fingertips, push them out in front of you, round through the spine. Inhale, the heart lengthens up towards the sky, heart rises. Exhale, hold and lift. Inhale to the sky. You're gonna draw over to the left. Opening up here through the lungs, through the rib cage, through the anahata. Inhale to the center. Exhale over to the right. So anahata is the heart chakra. The entity of compassion, empathy, love, passion, forgiveness, sorrow, heartbreak. Reach up towards the sky and exhale, hands to your heart. Root to rise, reach to the sky. Bend those knees, bow to the earth and fold. Halfway rise, inhale. Plant those palms, you're gonna step or float back high to low plank. Inhale, upward dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. This time, the left toes reach up towards the sky. And as you exhale, you're gonna draw your knee to meet your nose, squeeze. Inhale to the sky. Exhale, knee to nose, squeeze. Last one, inhale to rise. Exhale, plant your foot in between your thumbs. Rise up, press into left. Interlock those thumbs, heart rises up towards the sky. And as you exhale, sink a little deeper into that front knee, spread the fingertips over towards the left here, breathe. Inhale up to the sky. As you exhale, hands drop to your hips. You're gonna take that back leg, step up about halfway, straight in through your left leg. Take a mindful breath here. And exhale, pour forward. Again, you're not reaching for the earth. We're just thinking about creating length here through the back of the hamstring, through what we call that energy, the chakra energy of muladhara, the roots of our being. So the roots of our being teach us who we are. The heart, anahatta, teaches us love and compassion through things like grief and heartache, but also through things like joy and love. The root, which is much deeper in our bodies, teaches us who we are and reminds us what we need at the core of our being. Root through that front foot, shine the heart up towards the sky. You're going to step 
forward to the top of the mat. Root through those feet, reach up towards the sky. Exhale, close your eyes, hands to your heart. Maybe bringing both palms again over your heart center here, over your heart space. Take a moment to connect with who you are. At the root of the being, at the core of who you are, what is it that you need? Who is it that you are in this world? And what is it that you are offering? in this world, in this crazy life that we live in. What is your legacy? What is your root? No need to answer me, just thoughts. And take another full round of breath here. Washing it out with another vinyasa, which literally just translates to me to place in a special way. Reach up towards the sky, inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, exhale, bend those knees and back. Come on, slide to your shins, nice long flat back here. Plant your palms, stepping the left foot back first, followed by the right. Tilt slightly forward, elbows hug the ribs lower towards the earth. Untuck your toes, upward dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. You're going to bring your right foot up towards the sky. This time, bend the heel, the hip open, maybe rotate your ankle. Maybe you flip your dog if that's in your practice. Always optional. You're going to bring the palm back down to meet the earth. Sweep the right toes up to the sky. And step your foot in between your thumbs. Again, if you step forward and you need to. Hop a little, that's okay. Seal the back heel so the back toes are shooting out to the opposite edge of your mat. Front knee sinks down nice and low, so we're just gonna do a little bit of alignment before we go any further. So the front knee over your front ankle. The back toes are pointing out towards the edge of your mat. You're gonna be nice and long here. So your mats are about five-ish, or six-ish rather, feet long. We're about five-ish feet tall. If you're a little taller, take up a little bit more space. The arms open like wings, and the gaze looks forward. We're gonna add in again a little more rhythmic vinyasa, a little more rhythmic movement. Inhale to rise and straighten. Exhale to sink. Continuing to find that rhythmic breath the entire practice. So the deeper you're breathing, the more you're expanding the ribs. Settle here into your warrior two. The more you're expanding through your rib cage, the more you're expanding through your lungs, through your respiratory system. But also, anahata, the heart, is controlled by the elements of the air. So you're expanding your love. The deeper you go. Cargo those palms down to meet the earth. You're going to kick the heel towards the sky. Now, as you exhale, you're going to start to settle down. I'm going to step off screen for one second to grab a blanket. <laughs> you're going to start to settle down and drop your left knee to the earth. Now, if you need a blanket, go ahead and grab one. That's absolutely fine. I always need one because of my knees. You're gonna take the palms forward, slightly forward, lifting here through the heart, so like a proud little lion or lioness. Feel the shoulders roll back, heart length. If this feels okay, stay here. If you have a little further to go, maybe walk up onto the front knee. If you have a little further to go, maybe find cactus arms or the palms reach up towards the sky. Shift out of the hips. So if you can see I'm a little low, you're going to push in tension through the front foot and lift the heart to the sky. As you exhale, plant those palms. You're going to step back, tabletop position. Drop the belly towards the earth as the head and the heart rise. Inhale. Exhale, hold. One more here, just like this. Inhale to rise. Exhale, fold. Come back towards neutral. Tuck your toes. Hips to the sky, downward facing dog. Be mindful of where your props are at all times so that you're not stepping on the inside of them. You're going to reach your left foot towards the sky. Again, this time you're going to bend the knee, peel the hip open, start to rotate a little bit through the ankle, through the hip if you'd like. And then shift the toes up towards the sky. 
As you exhale, draw your foot in between your thumbs. Again, if you need to slide it forward, that's okay as well. This time I'm gonna show you from the back just for a moment so you can see what the back of your body looks like. You're gonna sit down nice and low again into that front knee so that the knee is over the ankle. The back heel is parallel with the back of the mat. It might be slightly pointed in at a 45 degree angle. And then the arms come all the way out. The gaze starts to look past the front fingertips. As you inhale, rise. Exhale, sink low. Last one. Exhale, sink down nice and low. Feel the shoulders relax. So you don't want shoulder earrings. Try to be nice and relaxed, nice and low in your shoulders. Feeling that expression of breath as it ripples through your body. Feeling the openness in your lungs, in your rib cage. And as you exhale, you're going to cartwheel the palms down to meet the mat and drop your back knee to the earth. So the back heel lifts, and then drop your back knee either to the earth or to a blanket. You're gonna untuck your back toes. <clears throat> and again, at first you might start to walk the fingertips forward and shift the heart open, finding that openness here through the heart. Again, like a lion or a lion. And then bring the palms up onto the knee if that feels good. Maybe you reach to the sky, maybe find cactus arms, you're lifting out of the hips. So many things to remember, but guess what? All you really need to remember is to breathe. And as you exhale, you're gonna plant those palms. Step it back, tabletop position. Find movement here, shifting the hips. And then you're going to come back towards neutral. You're going to find your way to a seat. I'm just going to unfold the blanket here for a moment because we're going to kind of shift and transition to the earth. So from your seat, palms rise towards the sky. And exhale, hands to heart center. Again, close your eyes. Breathe. Palms um, come to your knees. You're going to slide the knees in towards one another. At first, you're just going to draw the fingertips behind you so the fingertips look forward. You're going to roll the shoulders out and then push through those palms. Reverse tabletop. Start to shift the hips up towards the sky. If this is too much on your shoulders, you don't have to come here. You can just hang out for a moment with the fingertips behind you. As you exhale, your hips can stay lifted or you can drop them down to the earth. Entirely your choice. Make sure the elbows do not come out like wings. You want them in nice and tight, nice and tight, nice and tight. I'm going to show you this seated first. As you exhale, elbows come in, tap. Tap and tap. Now, if you want to add that extra layer, lift the hips. Tap, tap, tap. Three, three, two, and one. Drop the hips if they haven't already. Wrap your fingertips around your body. Head, head. And you're going to come all the way down to it, your backs. And rock the hips a little bit side to side. Coming towards neutral, you're going to release the right foot. The left foot comes up and over the knee. Now, if this feels good, you stay here. Maybe you take your left arm and just push the thigh away from you. If you have a little further to go, perhaps you interlock the fingertips around the thigh. Perhaps you interlock the fingertips around the right shin. Feel your shoulders relax. The chin tucks into the chest. Find that connection to your breath. I 
I promise I'm keeping an eye on the time for you so that you're not in your hip opener forever. But I also do want to let you know that sometimes when we stay in a hip opener for a little bit longer, we're able to connect to that release of the fascia. So my, one of my teachers, Cindy, was describing it the other day as like the cobwebs right, that get stuck around our muscles. One of the other ways to describe it is the membrane of an orange. So you see the um, white sticky stuff, the white um, fuzzy stuff that's around an orange. And that's what kind of suctions in our muscles, right? That's what holds us in together. And so when you're laying down for too long or when you're not moving your body for an extended period of time, it starts to just grow, right? It gets all over our bodies. So when we start to open things like the hips, especially, that's where it gets real sticky. When we start to shift open there, it's as though we're starting to gently peel those layers back so that we can open the muscles and they can flow a little bit more free. They can be a little bit more open. You're gonna gracefully release, bring both feet to the mat. And just for a moment, windshield wipe of those knees from side to side. You're gonna come back towards neutral. Keep the left foot where it is. The right foot comes up and over. Again, you can place the right palm on the thigh as you shift it away from the body. Or you can interlock the fingertips around the thigh or around the shin. So long as your chin's not like hanging up here, put your neck on the earth, your head, your head on the earth. And then continue to find that breath. So as I said, I'm keeping an eye, I'm keeping track of the time. But Anna Forrest does suggest doing hip openers for 10 minutes. No joke. And I wouldn't necessarily have us here for 10 minutes, but the idea that the longer we're here, the more we're able to unwind, the better we're going to feel. And so hips help us to control relationships. So with everything that's going on in our world, in our community, when we let go, when we soften in relation to others, when we express empathy and kindness and love, we create this really gentle, beautiful world. I oftentimes, without any sarcasm at all, I often wonder what would the world look like if we all had just an ounce more, an ounce more compassion and love. Just a little bit. Finding those deep, intentional, yogic breaths. Mindfully release all the binds and then windshield wiper those knees from side to side. Draw both knees into the heart. Again, rock a little side to side. Draw both knees over towards the left. To open your arms like wings or like cactus arms.
squeeze into the arms. And exhale to the other side over to the right. Draw those knees into your heart, rock the hips a little from side to side. And then allow your body to begin to settle into your final resting pose. And so if there is something that feels good to you, something that you really feel like you need before you settle into your Shavasana, you are more than welcome. Do whatever feels good for your body, for your heart. And I'm going to read to you a passage that is from this book called Wild and Free. It's subtitled, A Hope-Filled Anthem for the Woman Who Feels She Is Both Too Much and Never Enough. And I will post this link somewhere to this book. It's a beautiful book. Um, Side note, for the nonprofit, for Yoga for Families of Addiction, we do have Smile through Amazon. So if you ever order anything on Amazon, um, you can type in our nonprofit. So this book um, is a very beautifully written religious expression of what it means to toggle between this place of being too much and yet feeling like we're not enough in the world, which is something that women often struggle with, but also men. And so I'm going to be reading this in a gender neutral space. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful passage. We carefully manage our words, our actions, and our images to steer clear of vulnerability. We answer, I'm fine, whether or not that's the truth. Have you ever seen someone come completely undone? You know what I mean. The ugly cry, the mascara turned mess, the unfiltered, let it out moment of grief. That moment is exactly what we are afraid of. This fear of coming undone that's why we stay neat and tidy and always in control. We're afraid of showing too much emotion and being labeled hysterical. We worry what people will think if we don't have it all together. The opposite of faith isn't doubt, it's control. For the record, I love seeing people come undone. As a pastor's wife, a friend, and a leader, I find that nothing bums me out more than when I see the tears well up, the voice gets shaky, and the person I'm talking to stuffs it back down. Whatever they wanted to say, whatever was burning in their heart, I want to feel it and hear it. I feel safe to be my own broken and twisted self when they let what's really in their heart come out. So I dare you, let it come undone. Don't apologize for your tears or qualify how you feel. God or the universe isn't freaked out by our pain or by what we're really we just want it to be shared rather than bury it and pretend that it's not there. We at Barefoot are always here to listen, to hold space, and to love. 
settle a little bit more deeply into your Shavasana, taking that deep breath in through the nose. Maybe this time exhaling it like a wave through the mouth instead of continuing the attainment of your breath. Slowly start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Coming back to your conscious body. Allowing yourself to awaken from this dreamlike state of your Shavasana, from this relief. I'm going to take another breath here. And then roll from darkness to light, from Shavasana to the fetal position as you place your third eye or your forehead into the earth, sealing in the intention you want to sense. And then rise to a seat. Hands to your heart, your eyes are closed. We're all om together, so an om might sound silly in your home, but that's okay. Om is the vibration that we feel within us, that internal, external connection with the world. And even if it feels like it's this teeny tiny vibration in your living room, you're sending those healing waves, those healing vibes to not only yourself and your family and your friends that are potentially contained with you, also to the loved ones, to the neighbors, your friends and family that are a little bit of a flaw. Take a deep breath in. Oh. Your hands to your heart, moon, body, love. Hands to your lips, may you speak truth. And hands to your third eye, may you perceive kindness, wonder, and magic. The divine light in me bows to and honors the divine light in all of you. Namaste. Thank you, yogis. I hope you have a beautiful day.